Uh, what is up guys, New Limits here, and today I am bringing you the build I have been using to farm Great Rifts 105s under 2.5 minutes. I believe this build is capable of farming at least 110s, if not higher, under 3 minutes. I will leave a link to a D3 planner in the description so you can check out the exact gear I use in the gameplay. The Gears of the Dreadlands Demon Hunter has quite a lot of versatility in the way you can build it. I tried out a lot of variations, I tried Aug Guilds, Captain Crimson's, the normal Gears of the Dreadland set with and without the Ring of Royal Grandeur. I tried to work in a Squirts necklace with Fortress Ballista. And in the end, I finally ended up with two variations that I think are the best. You have the God Demon Hunter with a convention of elements. This is tankier because you can also squeeze in a Elusive Ring. But the problem with the convention of elements is that it is not consistent damage, but it is a lot of spike damage when you're on your cold cycle. And you have the God Demon Hunter with the Captain Crimson's, a variation that has more consistent damage and is my personal favorite. I will leave a link in the description for both of these builds if you want to check them out. If you like the builds, don't forget to hit that like button, as it really helps me out a lot. And let's get right into the skills. For the skills, we are using Preparation Focus Mind, gain 45 discipline over 15 seconds. We are using Smokescreen Special Recipe. This lowers the cost from 14 discipline to 8 discipline. And this is just really nice because we are using the preparation in combination with the smoke screen. We will pretty much have unlimited amounts of discipline and we will be able to keep spamming this. Pretty much every single time when this is off cooldown you want to be using it. Or in some case occasions you want to hold on for it. For example Electrified or Molten or something like that to, so you can definitely dodge that. But other than that you want to pretty much spam this throughout the entire rift. We're using Companion, Wolf Companion. Your wolf howls granting you and your allies within 60 yards 15% increased damage. So this is just a really nice damage multiplier. We're using Hungering Arrows, Devouring Arrow. Each consecutive pierce increases the damage of the arrow by 70%. And because we are using this weapon here, Strafe Projectiles Pierce. So we always pierce and this is just a really nice damage multiplier. We're using Vengeance, Dark Heart. Vengeance fills your heart, reducing all damage taken by 50%. So this is just uh, some damage mitigation. And we're using Strafe, Drifting Shadow, uh, moving at 100% of normal movement speed. So we're just go gonna go a little bit faster. For the passives, we are using Thrill of the Hunt. Enemies hit by your Hatred Spenders are slowed by 80%. We are using the Bane of the Trap to increase damage against enemies under the effect of Control Impairing Effects by 52.50%, depending on what rank it is. You gain an aura that reduces the movement speed of enemies within 15 yards by 30%. So the thrill of the hunt just makes sure that you will always apply the Bane of the Trap damage. We're also using Cult of the Weak, increased damage against slowed or chilled enemies. Because you are using Thrill of the Hunt, everything will be slow to everything that you hit. And the Call of the Weak will also uh, give you more damage. So this in combination with the Bane of the Trap is a really nice damage spike. We're using Archery. We are using hand crossbows, so we gain 5% critical hit chance and 1 hatred per second. The hatred isn't really all that important. It is nice, of course, but you shouldn't really run out at all with hatred. But the 5% critical hit chance is a really nice damage boost. And we're using ambush. You deal 40% additional damage to enemies above 75% health, which is also a really nice damage boost. Now, what you could also do if you don't want Thrill of the Hunt, you could go for Tactical Advantage. For some more movement speed with your smoke screen. You could go for hot pursuit if you want. If when you hit an enemy you just gain more movement speed. So that's a flat out 20% more movement speed. You could go for awareness if you want. It's a sheet death. When you receive fatal damage you instead vanish for 2 seconds. So you regenerate 50% of maximum life. You can also go for numbing traps. Enemies use slow chill or hit with fan of nice spike trap, cal trap, grenades. Um, have their damage reduced by 25%. In the cube we are using the 9th CD Satchel, Hungering Arrow is guaranteed to pierce and also deal 600% increased damage. We're using the Deb Diggers, primary skills that generate resources deal 100% damage, so these two combined are a really nice multiplier for the Hungering Arrows. We're using a Ring of Royal Grandeur because we are using the Captain Crimson set and the Gears of the Dreadland set. We want the 6 piece bonus and the 3 piece bonus and the only way we can uh, manage that is if we use the Ring of Royal Grandeur. And we are using the Hunter's Wrath here. Primary skills attack 30% faster, so it just really helps to gain our stacks faster, the momentum of the Gears of the Dreadland set. And also it deals 200% increased damage, which is again just a really nice multiplier. 
For our legendary gems, we are using Taeguk. Gain 6.64% increased damage for 1.5 seconds when you spend resources on a channeled skill. Strafe is a channeled skill, so that means that we will have the Taeguk. This is will always be active 10 stacks throughout the entire rift. So this is just a great option. We're using Bane of the Trap because we are slowing everything and just gonna increase our damage. You could also put in a Z Stone here if you want. That is also a, a viable option. And we're using Simplicity Strength, increase the damage of primary skills by 83%, depending on the rank, of course. This is a primary skill, so that's just gonna help you out quite a lot. So like I mentioned before, I will leave a link in the description so you can check out all the gear and all the stats that you want on every single gear piece. Right, so you definitely want to make sure that you have permanent uptime on your Vengeance. Your Dawn will help with this, reduce the cooldown of Vengeance by 61, it can go up to 65%. You want to have cooldown on one of your hand crossbows, so I'm using it on the Dawn. You want to have it on your gloves, your shoulders and your gem in the helm. And with the Captain Crimson set, you will have more than enough cooldown reduction and you should have permanent uptime on your Vengeance. You want to focus on critical damage, critical hit chance, and area damage. Right, so we are also using the Nemesis Bracers. I think the Nemesis Bracers are really important for this build to make it work because it just makes it really nice and fast. You will generally have about three pylons throughout your rift, that is three elites. You get the shadow clones, so your damage is really, really nice when you are clicking on those pylons and you get the nemesis bracers. Get that little extra help from the shadow clones. So I think the nemesis bracers are definitely a really nice um, asset for this build. We're also using the flavor of time, which I think is just a really nice asset because you will have three pylons pretty much every grade or rift. If you get a power pylon or a conduit, they're gonna last for one minute, which is gonna help you throughout pretty much the entire rift, which is just really, really helpful. If you wanted to make this a little bit more tanky, you can go for diamonds in your chest piece and in your pants. I'm going full on dexterity, but you can put in the diamond here so you get all resistances. Uh, as I said, you can change the passives as well. You could change the Wolf Companion too if you want. You can change that to, for example, Fan of Nice Bladed Armor. Then you gain 40% additional armor for 4 seconds, which is gonna make you tankier. But you will lose out on 15% increased damage. So that is why I like to go for this. You could also use your Paragon Points and put it into Vitality and not in Dexterity if you feel like you're dying a little bit too often. So there are definitely some options to make this tank here as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one.